Hi, this is Hazel Four Eyes. Um, today, I'll be talking about when you first become a Christian, when you first become born again, is when you trusted in Jesus as your personal um, Savior. Um, <clears throat> that you realize that He is Lord and that He died for your sins. Well, you might ask, well, how can I uh, go by, how can I um, continue being a Christian? Is that just being a Christian? Is there any guidelines? A lot of people refuse to go to church or um, continue in the faith because they say there's too many rules. Uh, it doesn't matter where you go, there's going to be rules. Uh, you, you know, when you're you're at home with your parents, you had rules. You can't even just break rules. When you uh, go out into the um, public, you can't just do whatever you want. You'll be breaking the law. That those are rules. There's regulations at jobs, works. People don't have, people don't complain about those kind of rules, but they complain about um, what the Bible says. Okay, and these are really harder. Uh, rules is actually the easiest rules there is, but yet is hardest for us. Uh, did you get that? It is the easiest thing to do, but it's the hardest thing for us to actually accomplish. Like the same thing to to accept that Jesus Christ as your Lord, that He died for your sins on the cross. You know. He died, was buried, and rose again. I mean, people can't get that through their mind. That all, all you need to do is um, the belief, um, not of good works, of faith alone, can actually get you to heaven. And that's what a lot of um, other religions um, have problems with. They said, "No, I got to do something myself." Jesus only did probably fifty percent. Or they say, "Oh, you lose your 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 faith or your salvation because you have sinned again." And the Bible clearly um, states that you cannot lose your salvation. Uh, no one can pluck you out of His hands, in God's hands. Once you're His, you're His. All it takes is one time. Um, but once you become saved there is good works, right? You go around telling people that you, you, you're you saved, but you're still drinking alcohol. I'm not talking about punch. You're drinking alcohol, you're still uh, smoking whatever you're smoking, using, um, doing whatever you uh, was doing before, and you you don't show any kind of evidence. People's gonna be like, Phew. and he, and then everybody will look at the whole Christianity as a whole, they're like, this is what Christianity is about, hypocrite, you know. Even though everybody, every single person is a hypocrite, but they're going to be looking at Christianity as a whole as a hypocrisy. <clears throat> so, as a new believer, what can you do? What should you do? First, I'm going to say to go to a Bible-believing church, okay? A Bible-believing church is where a church will... And every service will at least mention something about the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. They will preach the gospel. Okay? Uh, and they might be going into the Old Testament, but towards the middle or end or the beginning of the service, they always uh, says the, the gospel, you know, the truth, the um, how to um, receive salvation, you know? I've been to some churches that this was not the case. They didn't even do that. And we had new people coming in and leaving right away, not even getting saved. Um, okay, so in the Bible, this is a good place to start. Romans chapter 12, okay? And I'm going to go through it really uh, today, okay? And... The part I'm going to be reading is through the inter uh, New International Version. Um, I, I looked at it 
in the old te um, the King James version, but a lot of people who are newcomers can't really grasp the language for some reason, and I was one of them. And um, I, I I used to have this problem, you know. I, I used to tell people I don't understand the, all the words in, in there, and um, <clears throat> fellow Christians didn't try to how you say understand me, you know. I, I'm Hispanic, you know. I'm a new believer, you know, and. They, for them, because it's easy, they already know all the religious words, salvation, uh, reborn, you know, um, a, a bunch of other words. Um, so, I'm going to read you the New International Version, Romans 12. What it says, um, the Bible is the same. I know there's some watered down um, words. But it's not, it's only a couple in the New International Version. But I'm telling you, even the more newer ones, yes, I know for a fact those are watered down. And I do not recommend those, even though it might seem so easy to read, even for a child. They, um, I've, I've witnessed to people with their own Bible. I've witnessed to my mother-in-law before she passed away with her Bible and she was a Jehovah witness and there was actually there was nothing really changed of the scripture but people say oh everything's changed because that person is a Jehovah witness I did um, have it read to me I did have made sure before I said yeah this is what you're supposed to look at um, before I witnessed to her with that scripture and it's the same as the King James Version also with the Catholic Bible, okay? Um, some people don't even touch the Catholic Bible, okay? But if Catholics have it in hand, and you have your own King James Version, and it's like a different kind of Bible, say, you know what, let me put, I, I'm sure I can use your Bible. Let, 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 you read your Bible? Oh, okay. Well, okay. I'm getting sidetracked. But Romans 12, um, all right. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, this is not, it doesn't say brothers and sisters, just to let you know in the King James Version, it just says brethren, but it's gone. That's what it means actually when it's talking about brethren, brothers and sisters. Um, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what, God, what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay? You must be a living sacrifice. You, you must use your life um, to prove that you are born, born again. You know, um, you're not going to completely change right away. You know, um, you are transformed, yes, but... Um, you know, I, I've heard like on Moody Radio, they got, um, I forget the show, but they, I'm trying to remember it, but I can't remember it right now. The, on Moody Radio, they got uh, some show on sun, Saturday, Sunday nights, no, Sunday nights, oh, Unshackled, it's called Unshackled. There's people getting saved, Unshackled, and uh, they actually um, give their life to Christ. But some, not all, continue doing what they're doing, um, sin. But they are still saved, but they are convicted. So it's saying to give your, um, your life as a living sacrifice for um, verse 1 and verse 2. Uh, hum, um, for by great, the grace given me, I say to every one of you, Peter says, 
Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Um, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all behave the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is pros pros uh, pro prophesying, then prophecy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then service. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Um, this is talking about humble service uh, in the body of Christ. Um, there are some people, like I t talked to you about, um, unshackled the show. There's been people who's been drug addicts, um, big time criminals, and then once they get saved, um, it, it talks about teaching. Um, they are called to be a pastor or called to some kind of service, you know, missionary. Um, whatever you are pretty much called to, um, it's good to do it. You know, don't be like Jonah running away and eventually getting swallowed up in a whale. Okay? Yeah. Oh, and your whale is um, your life. <laughs> Alright, verse 9. Love must be sincere. This is a no-brainer. Hate what is evil. Um, cling to what is good. So it says, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. So you're no more your old person. You're a new new person. Um, so if you're still watching shows that is having rape, um, killings, doing all kinds of negative stuff. You're supposed to hate that uh, negative stuff. You know, it's evil. You know, um, people uh, claim all the time, oh, um, there's nothing evil about it because it's not real. It's fake. Uh, but there's a lot of st statistics out there that a lot of people who watch TV, they actually copy. And sometimes you watch that stuff and there's people who actually is more angrier because they watch a lot of this stuff um, I know I'm talking about shows but it's whatever evil okay you, if you had a bad mouth talk um, and you, you, you're newborn and you, you hear friends or co-workers talking like that leave that alone let them know you're a Christian hey I don't do that no more I don't talk like that no more and that's what I mean, cling to it, it. That's what the verse is talking about, too. Cling to what is good. Okay, separate for yourself from that. Um, be devoted to one another in love. Okay, be devoted to one another in love. And this is a hard part for a lot of people, too, because uh, I know certain people close to me that uh, they don't do this I have I actually have counseled them but uh, they refuse to hear the counseling honor one another above yourselves that's another one never be lacking in zeal but keep your spiritual spiritual fervor serving the Lord be joyful in hope patient in affliction faithful in prayer don't forget about prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. 
okay that was verse 9 through 13 so um, that's love in action the way a Christian should um, give love bless and including 14 through tw uh, 21 this will be bless those who persecute you what your enemies your boss your president you may not like them pray for them bless them bless and do not curse rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn live in harmony with one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position do not be conceited do not be pr be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position come on um if I, I'm living in an apartment right now, you know. Um, I'm just, if my if I lose my job, my wife lose her job. We we are actually out on the street, right? So who's lower than us? The homeless people. Um, I can actually go and and I have uh, go to a homeless shelter and volunteer, help a homeless person. It doesn't take much. You know, if you are substantially wealthy, is anybody below you, pretty much. So, this goes for everyone. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Or another thing, don't just say, oh, I'm homeless or whatever. There's no one below me. Uh, if you're saved, pretty much is an unsaved person. Um... It might have came out wrong saying, oh, so I'm, if I'm unsaved, I'm below you? No, no. It's like you need to help them. You need to tell them about the Lord Jesus and how you got saved. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. No revenge. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. And uh, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, this last one, it says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay. A lot of Christians, um, especially know they probably are told or mistaken and think that the devil is um, making them doing bad things. Uh, the devil is one of, of one person, is a one one thing. If the devil was in a, um, somewhere in China or India or Ghana, Africa or the United States or Canada, if he's in one of those locations, he cannot be in no other location. And the reason I say this for is because there's a lot of people, I've been to different places, and they say, oh, the, the devil made me do it. Okay? The, the, the evil, it comes from within us. We, we've been born with this, um, into an evil world. We've been into a sinful world. And like I was saying earlier, once um, you're saved, you're still going to be have that with you because you are of the flesh you still have your body you still here okay the only way that's not gonna happen is when you pass away in our with the Lord okay because there is no sin allowed 
where he's at in his presence do not mistaken the devil making you do things and you are doing it yourself the biggest enemy the biggest enemy and the biggest cause of a person doing something is themselves not the devil the devil is there to like kind of twist us and guide us towards the evil but he is not in every person he is not every single person um, doing it to every single person we are just using that you know we can't even say I mean I, I've hear that a lot people saying the devil made me do it no it was you that um, chose to cheat on your wife it was you that chose to disobey um, God it was you to your choice to backslide okay there is temptations and people will tempt you okay but it's your your is your job your decision to fight against that okay this is a spiritual battle between the good and evil okay and you may seem like you're losing because there's few of you and I'm telling you there's few Christians there's a lot of evil out there remember the Bible says the gate is very narrow very narrow to go to heaven It's very narrow what does that mean that most people is not gonna fit it's not gonna go through there so of course you're gonna feel left out you might uh, try to reach out to somebody at church I'm going to suggest yes do that with a pastor if, if you still um, not getting it there I'm gonna suggest um, you know it's okay to call a Christian radio show or um, talking to another Christian um, try to find out if there's any other Christians within your family see if you can talk with them but hold strong do not fall back do not backslide because that once you're backsliding some once you get the momentum growing sometimes um, going sometimes it grows and grows and it's kind of hard to turn back around um, every person every person this is gonna happen to I mean if you're young like I am I still probably got 30 40 years ahead of me you know my family lives for old age very old age um, so I know I'm gonna have a lot of tribulation I'm gonna have a lot of things going on it is up to you um, to decide to do what's right not everybody not everybody in the church is consistent okay they may not be open to it but this is a fact we are in our flesh and you are in your flesh and I'd like to thank you as a newcomer in the believer of Christ um, if you still have questions if you want me to answer anything um, and if you ask well what, what can you offer um, yeah I, I've, I've been in a seminary I've took in uh, seminary classes um, I'm still going to school in a different school and I am planning to go back to the seminary um, I've been in the ministry um, I've answered phones um, for, for an international um, show with a big pastor um, he and our purpose was to really say, um, get the souls um, to save souls over the uh, phone and I was answering the phones another ministry is um, probably you heard of it is called Awana um, so if 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 I can't answer something 
and that you have I would direct you to the right to the right direction you know that's all it takes again I'd like to welcome you a newcomer um, you're a baby in Christ it's okay you're, you'll stumble but guess what us Christians will be there to grab your hand lift you back up be motivated we need to motivate each other as well okay um, go to church go to a Bible believing church pray pray and pray okay pray 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 that's a big thing pray to Jesus to God pray to God in the name of Jesus remember Jesus says pray in my name and my father will give doesn't don't overtake that by the laundry uh, lottery or something like that um, so thank you my name this is Hazel Four Eyes uh, you have any questions post it in the comments I will answer them um, if you feel that any videos I should be doing um, any ideas let me know um, subscribe if you like and hope to hear from you soon thank you